You talked about Lupron, bro. I don't mean you want to go into that. This is a drug used to medicinally castrate, uh, let's say, older people that like to prey on younger people. This is what they're giving prepubescent boys to not start the journey and transition into manhood. My name is Michelle Forcier, um, and I have a medical degree from University of Connecticut Residency, University of Utah Pediatrics, and I've worked for a number of different Planned Parenthoods for 20 years. I do advanced contraception and abortion, as well as gender hormones, and sort of looking at the whole sort of schema of gender, sex, and, and reproductive um, justice. So you've done a lot of work in this field. Could you just start by telling us? Sure. Uh, at what age can a child first begin to transition into another gender or identify themselves as a gender different from how they were born. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's there's research and data that show that um, babies and infants um, understand differences in gender. Some children figure out their gender really early. And the reason why we are say, oh, that's, that's interesting or important is because they're figuring out their gender identity is not necessarily congruent with their sex assigned at birth. When the, when the doctor sees the penis and says, this is a male, has the sex of male, that's an arbitrary distinction. Telling that family, based on that little penis, that what? your child is absolutely 100% male identified, no matter what else occurs in their life, that's not correct. Have you ever met a four-year-old who believes in Santa Claus? Mm-hmm. So this is someone who believes that a fat man is traveling through the sky on a flying reindeer at lightning speed coming down his chimney with presents. Yeah. Would you say that this is someone who maybe has a tenuous grasp on reality? They have an appropriate four-year-old handle on the sure. reality Agreed. that's very real for them. Agreed. Agreed. But Santa Claus is real for them, but yeah. Santa Claus is not actually real. Yeah, well, and, but Santa Claus does deliver their Christmas presents. Well, yeah, but he's not real, though. To that child, they are. When I see a child who, you know, believes in Santa Claus, and then, let's say this is a boy, and he says, I'm a girl. Mm-hmm. This is someone who can't distinguish between fantasy and reality, so how could you take that as a reality? I would say that as a pediatrician and as a parent, I would say how wonderful my four-year-old and their imagination is. Male gametes. That's what makes me male. No, your, your sperm don't make you male. Then what does? It's a constellation. In reality. In truth. Okay. Whose truth are we talking about? The same truth that says we're sitting in this room right now, you and I. No. You're not listening. If I, if I see a chicken laying eggs and I say that's a female chicken laying eggs, did I assign female or am I just observing a physical reality that's happening in the world? Does a chicken have gender identity? Does a chicken cry? Well, a Does chi a chicken commit suicide? Let's frame it, with... it because you're talking, you're trying yeah, to... A chicken has sex like any, like any biological organism. A chicken has organism. an assigned gender, but a chicken doesn't have a gender identity. So we assign female to chickens when they lay eggs? That's a, we that's... assume they're female if they lay eggs. One of the drugs used is Lupron, right? Which. Mm -hmm has actually been used to chemically castrate sex offenders? Got him. You know what? I'm not sure that we should continue with this interview because it seems like it's going in a particular direction. Well, you're a medical professional. I am a medical professional. So you don't want to talk about the drugs that you give to kids or? Again, I'm a physician and I use medication. You're choosing exploitive words, drugs I give to I'm, kids. I'm choosing a chemical word castration. that was in a dictionary. That's not a correct term for puberty blocking. I, mean, I could like look it up person. on my phone, but I'm pretty sure if I looked it up. Like, you, you can look it up on your phone. It says medical definition, the administration of a drug to bring about a marked reduction in the body's production of androgens and especially testosterone. And I'm saying as a pediatrician who takes care of hundreds of these kids, when you use that terminology, you were being malignant and harmful. I mean, there are some who would say that giving chemical castration drugs to kids is malignant and harmful. It's about the context of caring for a child and, and seeing the, the suffering that kids can have that have not been in affirmative home situations. So we're going on this journey. Boys can be girls, girls can be boys. Men can be women, women can be men. It makes me wonder, what, what is a woman? What is a woman? A woman is someone who claims that as their identity. It could be many things to many people. It could be many things to many people. Guys, take your kids to your doctor when they're sick. This is who they're going to be speaking to. These are the modern medical practitioners of 2022. Get yourself a Muslim doctor, please. The love of And a legit Muslim God. doctor. Yes, please, inshallah. Oh, my Lord. I've seen this before, but it's... Just, oh, my God. It's like my faded memory bias just doesn't want to remember. I know. We BS. watched this last week. Yeah.
That's oh my god. Okay. <laughs> okay, a lot of things to unpack here. I say we go chronologically. The first thing that she was rambling about is this whole thing about kids having a gender identity at a very young age. Okay. Oh no, bro. Go on to that because you had a lot to say in our uh, alphabet episode. Just, just think that they don't know. They don't know. Well, I mean, they. It's like you said, they believe in Santa Claus. They believe in the Easter Bunny. They believe in like Spider Man and Superman. And they, they think this is real. And then she's saying, like, oh, well, it's real to them. Okay, fair enough. But it doesn't change the fact that it's not actually real. So if the kid now says, oh, like if a, if a little boy says, oh, well, I'm a girl, that doesn't mean it's real. And that that doesn't mean that an, a parent should uh, pretty much submit to that. Mm-hmm. And then the fact that when they start getting older, they don't actually need the parent's consent to take these drugs. I think that's that's a bit much. Yeah. Is this is this a live world premiere? I don't know, bro. You tell me. You tell me. <laughs> <laughs> this guy. Bro, we gotta study medicine, real medicine. Um, yeah. So this is a biological woman, from what I know. She's a doctor, legit doctor. Uh, shout out to uh, is it Nara or Nora? Thank God I was born in a third world Muslim country. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. That's the dream, All right? But someone has to speak about this being in the West, and we're not. We're not going to use, you know, derogatory language or hate on them or shaming types or anything like that. We're coming from a strict academic, scientific, medical point of view. The same one that these degenerates think that they're using. We're going to use the same medical terminology and point of view. Uh, They talked about Lupron, bro. Rami, you want to go into that? This is a drug used to medicinally castrate, uh, let's say, older people that like to prey on younger people. This is what they're giving prepubescent boys to not start the journey and transition into manhood. Actually, I mean, you're the uh, the more medical expert here. I think but how does that make you feel, bro? Just knowing that, like, let's say, like, yeah. you have a younger brother, yeah. and he's yeah. young, yeah. young and he's like, you know, he's going to school. He learns about this whole toxic masculinity. You know, he sees manhood as something. You know, by yeah. the way, guys, stay tuned for July first, inshallah. First episode dropping. We talk right about that. But manhood as something taboo, something scary. You know, mm-hmm. he goes on on the media and he sees either a weak man or he sees a complete evil, vile, toxic man. He doesn't see a good model of masculinity. So he says, you know what? I don't want to become a man. I want to stay a nice boy that I am. Yeah. Let me take this drug. And today they're passing bills that parents don't need to give their consent. Yeah. And it's against the law for them to do it. What if this was your brother? Man, wallah, that's that's hard. That's completely heartbreaking. They talk about a case uh, somewhere in Canada, maybe Vancouver or something, where um, basically this they've not forced it upon a young girl, but kind of forced it on her father. Uh, and... Basically, there are legal consequences for him uh, trying to fight against it, basically, which is absolutely absurd uh, because now we're living in a day and a time where uh, parents have very little say in what their kids learn. If their kids are being brought in, you know, what fantasy that <laughs> their kids are living in, subhanAllah. But I find this this trend a lot, and, and it's really important that we go to the root of the problem, right? You're not going to snip every branch of the tree if you want to get rid of the tree. You go to the root, you dig it out, get rid of it, right? The root of all this, I mean, if you look at it, we live in a very liberal society. Um, and, and liberalism at its core is do whatever, you know, pleases you, uh, mainly physically, right? Whatever pleases you, go for it. And they have little care to what is actually harmful, beneficial, or truthful. That's why they allow alcohol. That's why they legalized weed in a lot Not of places. Not just a lot, but promote it, bro. Yeah, yeah. Including, they, they sell cigarettes. They legalize weed in Canada. Alcohol is cool, you know, to these people, even though alcohol literally kills. Mm. Alcohol-related murders and deaths are, you know, honestly, one of the highest stats when it comes to death and, and murders and so on and so forth. And, and accident-related deaths and the DUIs, obviously, all these crazy things because they don't care about what's actually healthy. And what they don't talk about a lot, which is the harsh truth, the harsh reality, is things like trans regret. Are there mm. not children out there that regret the fact that, you know, they were ignorant and these doctors put these pills down their throat, essentially? Are there not people mm. like the, the the woman that you saw that looks like a man now because she underwent surgery because they were telling her that that's okay, go for it. And now she is literally killing her. They we're not going to talk about the people who, un- she talked about, you know, do, do chickens unalive themselves. People, trans people unalive themselves because of trans regret. 
because people like you put it out there. It's like, no, it's normal. It's okay. They do it. And then they don't feel normal anymore. They mm. don't because you're not basing it in truth. And she, well, that's the last thing I'm going to say. She, she said, whose truth are we talking about? Mm. My truth is that you're a moron. Facts. That, that's, that is what I'm going to refer to you as uh, for now on because that's my truth. That's a fantasy I live in. You're just a moron. There's only one truth. There's only one reality. And I understand words are a construct, so on and so forth. But when people say gender or sex, uh, referring to biology, it is not subjective. It is objective. And yes, I understand that there could be, there are different sexes. It's not straight male or female. You could have, uh, what is it, X, 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 Y, or blah, blah, whatever. But if you look at the most rare one, I think it's, what is it, X, 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 Y as a chromosomal yeah, disorder? Yeah? Exactly, yeah. The most rare one only occurs in males. So mm. even then, it's still, you're either male or a female. Yes, there's a maybe a binary, <laughs> you know, in between some places it does occur. Other than that, there is no spectrum. There is no change. And for you to make it up based on, literally, you're just your imagination. And put mm. that onto kids as well, man. It's harmful. See, you can be a legit, you know, hermaphrodite. You're born with both. You could be a chromosomal hermaphrodite, like, you know, Klinefelter. Any of these syndromes where you have, like, two Xs and one Y, just like Rami was saying, or one Y, two Xs, or just one X, that's possible too. And you look at these abnormalities... But they were made perfectly in the reverence that Allah has created them as such. And I believe that Allah has, you know, Allah doesn't make any mistakes. And if they were created as such, khalas. We're not talking about those. We're talking about the people that were born as XX or XY. And they're letting society dictate that they should not be that way. Omar Zaid, Dr. Omar Zaid, may Allah bless him, talks a little bit about this in his book. He says that, you know, when these kids are young, right? They have different, uh, you know, amounts of uh, androgens in the placenta, right? Basically, where they're growing in the womb. And these dictate on a scale and spectrum, according to his predominant research as a medical practitioner, as an MD, these dictate where they fall in a scale of masculinity or femininity of being a woman or a man. SubhanAllah, take that in. The amount of androgens or hormones in a mother's womb dictate how masculine or girly a boy is going to be or how girly or... Of a tomboy, a girl would be, you know. This is what he did and conducted in his research. SubhanAllah. It doesn't mean that they're a boy or, or a girl, vice versa. Bro, I can I can explain this very easily. Go for it, bro. For people, right? We as humans go through stages. Okay. Sometimes when we're in the stage, we might think a certain way, might feel a certain way. Right? That passes. And once it passes, now we feel and think completely different. Yeah? Not to air anything out, but look at this. This is a tattoo. As Muslims, we're not supposed to have tattoos. I'm a revert. So I got this before coming to Islam. Now, when I got this tattoo, I was very sure this is what I wanted. Mm -hmm. Right? Why? Because that's just the state. Just your mental in. state it's at just that the point. mental state, that's right? What it is. Now, as time passed, I literally would look at this tattoo in the mirror and I would have this almost like remorse, this regret, like, what did I just do? Like, I'm, I can never undo this. Even if I were to get the laser removal, I can never fully undo this. And I would go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And I can guarantee you everyone in this world who has tattoos has this. Well, they'll go through stages where they're actually, oh, I actually like what I have. And then they look at it and they're like, why did I get this? I made a huge mistake or something like this. Or mm. I should cover this up or something. Mm. Right now, what I'm trying to get at with these tattoos, this example that I'm showing here myself as an example, is that I went against the natural inclination. I went against the fitra. Right? So that's why there's this huge regret. You do something that's aligned with the fitra. There is no regret. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So it's like this whole See, transgender truly thing. Truly for your fitra. Yeah, yeah, this whole transgender thing. And, and for people who don't know what fitra is, this is your natural inclination. Mm. It is your natural internal state, the thing that you are born with. Yeah. yeah. All right? So if, again, if, if you do something that's aligned with that, then you don't feel this regret that's constantly coming up um, through these stages that things change. But... If you do something that's against 
then mm -hmm. let me touch on this point that Ru wrote because you know a lot of people are wondering why why do food why does food matter i was speaking about this with someone i'm not going to mention any names now but there are things in our diet there are things in the medications that we take the prescriptions that we take these are all to some degree greater or lesser going to be endocrine disruptors today what does this mean your hormonal system that Allah has designed perfectly to not need any drugs, subhanAllah, to not need any of these enhancements, to not need anything, right, to modify it. They're ex it's extremely sensitive, bro, right? Women take birth control pills that mess up their hormones for life. You know, men take performance enhancing drugs that change up their hormones for at least a couple of decades, bro, up to science has proven this, if not just a few years. And cause permanently damage in, in some way, shape, or form in a lot of cases. But what we do know for a fact is when a woman who is pregnant is eating, you know, a lot of the things today that have med medications or at least chemicals in the food, right? GMOs, uh, pesticides, these types of things in our diet, in the water, it really does affect the developing fetus to some greater or lesser degree. And that's a leading cause of what's going on with, uh, you know, these birth abnormalities in the, in the androgens and the hormones. And it leads to a bunch of these kids growing up either as masculine girls or feminine boys. And it's one of the leading causes, bro, but it's profitable, right? So why talk about it? Big Pharma is one of the biggest culprits between behind this, behind uh, the alphabet movement, behind the sex reassignment thing. Extremely disturbing, bro. Yes, yeah, a lot. Uh, one last thing I want to say to kind of piggyback off what Brother Anhil said is, um, subhanAllah, there are some things that we just we shouldn't be allowed to choose, bro. <laughs> we shouldn't be allowed to choose some things. Uh, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decides you're gonna be a male or a female, khalas, like you don't have the right to choose. You don't, you know. Uh, I don't you don't you don't get to choose anything really. You don't get to choose your ethnicity, you don't get to choose your skin color, you don't get to choose what you know class you're born into, if you're low class and middle class, if you live, live in a first world country, third world country, and sex, gender, whatever you want to call it, just one of those things. You you just can't choose and khalas like Allah gives you something. Who's more wise? You or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is more wise. Even, even, even if you for some reason disagree, you can't actually change it. That's I think that's the worst part about it. You will never actually change it effectively. Mm. You can only try your absolute hardest. And I think that's why a lot of people have uh, this trans regret because mm. a man will look at a woman and be like, I'm going to become that. You will never be that. Mm, you will only never. pretend you are until you get hit in the face with the reality that you're not. And Damn. then it's going to hurt, bro. And then you're going to fall into trans regret. Well, it's scary, man. Read this, bro. bro. That's harsh. Well, we got to read it out loud. Some people are listening on Spotify. May Allah bless them. So, Sister Sonia writes, I'm an ex-rad femme. Uh, you guys know what that is. And an anarchist in some sense. And I have seen madness. I was close to being a nihilist because of this gender ideology. It made me depressed, so I turned to religion. Mashallah. May Allah bless her. Mashallah. I mean, I mean. But man, it's crazy, bro. And these these people who, who go through this, what you just said, man. Like, bro, they're going to get to the point where they do regret it. And by that point, it's too late, bro. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can't go back. Like, yeah. if if you were a man from the beginning and you ended up chopping your... Pee -pee. Can I say it? Pee -pee. Can, can we say this on live? No, no, just say pee-pee, bro. Pee-pee. Just yeah, say it, bro. Me. You're gonna get this. So you're gonna get this whole thing deplatform, bro. <laughs> We're this close, guys. We are this close to be completely booted off all social. We've already gotten banned from Patreon and getting. Can I say it in Spanish? No. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. You, you got a lot YouTube of you got a lot of YouTube it? geeks, bro, in in Mexico that are that are trying to block channels left and right. They're gonna see. You. They're already coming for you, bro. Subhanallah, we can't even say the word, guys. Cucumber. They cut the cucumber off. They cut in the cucumbers. And once they don't have that cucumber no more, and they realize, what the hell did I do? Yeah, it's too late. You can't get that cucumber put back on. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm.